so many people do not realize the importance of this partnership. Because most people think that Ripple and this other company are complete opposites and actually against each other. And that couldn't be further from the truth. So let's get into why Ripple and JP Morgan, yes, you heard right, JP Morgan and their Onyx platform could be the most game-changing partnership in the space. So let's dive into what Onyx actually is. It's essentially this digital platform that JP Morgan have created, and obviously focuses on the blockchain and digital payment side of things. And I think this is where people get things confused because they talk a lot about revolutionizing cross-border payments, making transactions faster, more transparent, and more cost-effective. And so people look at that and go, oh my goodness, <laughs> Onyx is a competitor of XRP. It's going to take it over. JP Morgan's a massive entity, way bigger than Ripple. What can Ripple do? But the question we always must ask in these instances is how are they doing that? Like, how is Onyx actually doing that? What actually is Onyx? And that was a rhetorical question because I'm going to tell you after my research what the answer is. And I think I actually even said it before. It's a digital platform. It's not a digital asset or a digital bridge asset or an agnostic bridge asset. They didn't say any of those things and so the alarm bells shouldn't have gone off in the first place. It's a platform that JP Morgan have made. Why is it important that it's JP Morgan that did this? Well. Think about JP Morgan. They run a massive operation all around the world. They're literally one of the biggest banks in the world. If they have a platform and Ripple have an asset, how might you think they might work together? It's for example, to settle funds. Well, yeah, you probably tied it all together there yourself. Onyx is the platform and XRP, at least in, at a limited capacity right now, is the asset that does actually transfer the value across the platform. Now, why can't Ripple just make this platform, right? It should be very easy to do that. And you could make the case that RippleNet is this, right? But RippleNet really focuses on the traditional financial system. And as things go on, they'll kind of upsell their clients to use the on-demand liquidity part, which is the cryptocurrency and blockchain side of things. But Onyx is designed specifically for blockchain and digital payments technology. And so what Ripple can stand to gain here from this, rather than using their own kind of RippleNet system, they can gain access to the whole network that JP Morgan exhibits. JP Morgan has their fingers in every single pie around the world. And so Ripple partnering with JP Morgan allows access to all of those ways through to the different countries via trusted pathways. JP Morgan's got all of the relationships. Yes, Ripple's got loads, 300 banks or something, but JP Morgan's significantly bigger than that. And so Ripple would be kind of using these predetermined pathways for all the payments, allowing the Onyx system to create these like frictionless pathways all the way through to from one entity to another. It essentially allows Ripple to reach the world. Let me say that again. It allows Ripple to easily reach the whole world of payments. This JP Morgan and Onyx partnership is the biggest game-changing partnership that they've done so far. And so you'll be thinking, okay, well, that's what Ripple stands to gain from this partnership, but what does JP Morgan stand to gain? Well, actually, XRP is kind of made for this. It's made for this type of system. And Onyx only really works when it's got an asset to send through its system that is frictionless and cheap and quick. And this is XRP down to a T. And I'm gonna start wrapping soon, apparently. But here's where it gets super interesting because JP Morgan's Onyx allows the use of what's called deposit tokens. And deposit tokens simply put, and this is a topic we've covered a lot, it's just only recently got the term deposit tokens. It's essentially any asset backed token. So when we talk about XRP being potentially backed by either a basket of commodities or a single commodity or, or SDRs or whatever it is, that is now a classification of token called deposit token. And so that could also be stable coins, for example. So how does XRP actually even become a deposit token? Is it even needed? And for that to happen, the institutions and the regulators need to understand it's stable and it's useful. And there might be a framework that you know, there's a criteria that XRP has to follow in order to be a deposit token. But let me just say, for Onyx's system to work, XRP does not have to be a deposit token. And the big question I had in all of this was, what's the difference between an SDR 
and a deposit token because it just sounds like the same thing. And actually really the only difference is that an SDR is issued by the IMF. A deposit token is actually held by a custodian or an issuer, but not the IMF. So there's actually very little difference in there. But typically you would see deposit tokens being used by smaller entities and SDRs being used by larger entities, although that actually does overlap a little bit. So there's not much distinction there between the two. And so whether XRP becomes a deposit token or not, it's kind of out there for anyone to have their best guess. It's much like the asset backed tokens argument that we've had many times on this channel. So if it's still not kind of settling in what this Onyx platform is, let me give you an analogy that should really smoothen that out for you. Imagine JP Morgan as a highway for payments. This is all of JP Morgan. But on the left hand side, you've got this different lane. It's even painted different and it has requirements, specific requirements of the types of vehicles that can actually go into that lane. What's interesting about that lane is that this is the Onyx lane, right? And only users of the Onyx platform can drive in that lane. And so what you end up with is normal lanes for like normal financial payments and then an Onyx lane for Onyx payments. What's really cool about that is that in the Onyx lane, you could set a different speed limit. Right, everyone else might be going at 70 miles an hour and everyone in there might be going at 700 miles an hour, right? It could be completely dictated. I think the US have it in some places where you've got high occupancy vehicles that only go in one lane. In the UK, we have versions of that and I'm sure everyone does around the world, but it's essentially that kind of thing, but they operate on their own rules. And the way I see it is that XRP has been made for that lane or the other way around, JP Morgan have made Onyx, the Onyx lane in the highway to fit a currency or a payment solution like XRP to run perfectly. It's kind of made for that lane. So they provide the roads to all of the connections to all the banks around the world and they add a little lane in there for those kind of premium Onyx users that get to utilize the XRP on those lanes at massively different speeds, significantly less friction and significantly less cost. So in this instance, I would basically look at Ripple as just having landed an amazing partnership that connects them to everywhere in the world through these pre-established lines, these trust lines. I know that's not the right word, but you, you get what I mean. There's like these connections with all the countries and all the different banks have already been formed by JP Morgan and Ripple's basically attaching onto that and XRP's the vehicle that's driving along that lane. So when we see JP Morgan and Ripple partnering on the Alfadan exchange, for example, this is one of those kind of test runs, you know, let's add this lane into our roads that already exist from this country to this country or from this country to other countries, see how it goes, right? And Alfadan exchange have been working with Ripple since January 2022. So it wouldn't surprise me that as we move forward, we see JP Morgan and Ripple and another party in between working together to further the tests of this platform. Eventually, I believe this is how Ripple connects to the world. I think JP Morgan is the way that it connects to the world. Yes, Ripple have done some amazing work getting all these partnerships over the years, but JP Morgan's on a different level. They've been doing it for years. Yeah, since 1799, this company's been making its connections around the world. And obviously there's been some name changes along the way and different ownership, but their time in the game really plays to their favor. So when you hear this news and you think, oh no, Ripple and XRP is being competed by by JP Morgan and we're never gonna win. In fact, these things usually don't end up like that. Ripple is one of the chosen ones, I do believe that. And we are simply utilizing, we as in, I, mean, I speak like I'm from Ripple, <laughs> but I'm not. We're basically utilizing the connections of these massively established institutions to use our technology and just get connected to the rest of the world. So we'll see how this impacts the price of one single XRP, which is all we care about at this point. <laughs> And if you want to know how the experts are coming to their conclusions for what an XRP is actually worth, how they calculate those things, the, the methods they use, I would go and click this video. It's the best video I think on the internet about XRP price predictions. And oh, actually it's now moved below me here. So click the video below. Let me know what you think in the comments. Stay emotionless and I'll see you in the next one.